Uh, I'll, I'll kick us off. First of all, congratulations. You're into a grand final. How does it feel? Yeah, look, I think it feels terrific for our footy club. You know, it's we've worked incredibly hard to, to be involved in these games and significant games. And, you know, I sit here and I think of all our supporters back home. Um, I think of all the times, hard times they've been through. And, you know, we get an opportunity now to do something really special. And, you know, we've earned that right. And, um, you know, I think there's a level of excitement, but there's a level of still, you know, a job to do. And, um, you know, we'll progress that way. What did you make of Max Gorn's effort tonight, especially that third third quarter when he kicked those four goals? Yeah, I think typified tonight why he's the skipper of the footy team. You know, he he played his heart out. You know, it wasn't just his impact on the scoreboard. I thought his ruck work was strong, but you know, the thing that stood out for me was the the chase down tackle of Gary Rowan in that third quarter. You know, I think that's the way we want to be seen as a footy club, a team that never gives up and continues to play the right way for as long in the game as possible. And um, Max demonstrated that, as did all our leaders. So, um, you know, he was incredible. You know, he uh, impacted the game in a lot of ways and he he's a big character and a big figure in our footy club. Uh, to win by such a margin, like, uh, uh, to dominate the way you did, what does that do for everyone heading into a grand final? I think it reaffirms a lot of the belief that we've got in, our, in, in the way we play. Um, clearly, we base our game around our contest, our ability to defend. But I think you saw tonight there's a potency in the way we attack. Um, and we can hit the scoreboard. So um, I think tonight we, we build belief again. We understand we handled the moment well, and the moment was really about just being ourselves and uh, making sure people saw who we were and be true to ourselves. And um, we were that tonight. Um, but, you know, we've, we've still got work to do. There's a, a really big challenge that's sitting right in front of us, and you know, we want to make the most of it. Goody, what's, Goody, the, yeah, congratulations. What's, the prognosis on, what's the initial prognosis on Stephen May? Yeah, Steve's just got a bit of a tight hamstring. Um, clearly, he came back on the ground for a period of time. Uh, we think it might be back-related. You know, he could still move. Um, so we'll assess that over the next few days. But we're quietly confident that he'd be OK. But, um, you know, it is back-related, sort of tightness in the hamstring. So we'll have to assess that and, and you know, see what it looks like over the next few days. Goody, mindful you would have managed that really carefully tonight. What was the thinking behind bringing him back on given the uh, initial injury is there a risk that exacerbated it or are you pretty comfortable with that decision oh look Tom the game was still in the balance you know he's uh, an important player to us he felt like it was okay um they felt like it might have been back related so at that stage of the game it was worth taking the risk um he got a little bit tighter as the game went on so we didn't want to take the risk and you know we obviously subbed him out of the game Simon, does the two weeks between now and the grand final uh, help him? Is that do you give him a bit extra time off before you? Uh, before, is, it, is it difficult to manage, and, and how do you manage him over that two weeks? Oh, look, it certainly won't hurt. That's for sure. Um, you know, it gives him a chance to really rest and recover over the next three or four days. As will our whole group. You know, we'll do a very similar program to what we had um, heading into this game, and, and take three or four days away from the game and and reset ourselves and build ourselves up come the back end of this week. So, um, you know, that, that'll help Steve and there's no question about that. You know, he's a, he's a full pro now and um, he'll look after his body and give himself every chance. From the, from the end of the qualifying final to the grand final, a month would have gone past and you would have played one game of footy. How tough is that to manage compared to the normal workload of your players? Yeah, I'm not concerned one bit. You know, that's what training's for. That's what your preparation's for. Our players have had great continuity and they've got a great level of fitness amongst them as a playing group. And you know, we'll train hard over the next, you know, eight to 10 days in terms of our preparation. That's how we do it as a footy club and, and we'll prepare as best we can. So that doesn't, uh, you know, that won't hinder us at all. You know, we've got our whole playing list here. We'll be able to get some match simulation into our playing group and prepare ourselves as best we can. Goody, Nathan Jones, such an important spiritual part of this group. I think he's got twins due fairly shortly. What's the considerations there? Will he go back to go back home or will he stay with the group? Yeah, look, that's a decision that's going to be left with Nathan. You know, obviously he's really close to selection. It's a really tough situation. You know, he's a, he's so proud of his footy club right now. Um, he's given so much and he's in a really tough situation. You know, Jerry's due with twins and obviously... Um, could come at any stage. So we'll continue to be A's with Nathan and Jerry um, about what that looks like. Um, you know, but he is close to selection and he's pushing his case and you know, he certainly wants to be a part of it.
we've just watched three of the four emergencies training out on the Oval after the game, and he was the only one of those who wasn't out there. Should we read anything into the fact that he wasn't training with them? No, you shouldn't read anything into that. Um, you know, Nate's got a fair bit of work in behind him now. Um, you know, he's been playing for you know eight to ten weeks and doing a fair bit of training. So, yeah, I wouldn't read anything into that. Simon, given how dominant you were tonight, it seemed to be almost like the perfect game. How do you go about making sure this isn't where you peak this final set, this final series? Yeah, how do you kind of you know go and reset again and then you know, get um, build up for the grand final? Uh, it's been the whole knock of our footy club is our ability to reset and understand what the game demands. And, you know, yeah, we played well tonight against uh, a high quality opposition. Um, but next game's a new game. Um, both teams will start on zero and we'll have to be at our best again. So um, that's as simple as we need to make it. You know, we'll digest this evening. Clearly, there's some things that have gone really well for us, but the challenges are still there for us. And, um, you know, one thing that I have been proud of is this club is how we've dealt with pressure, how we've dealt with expectation and how we've gone about resetting and respecting what the game demands. Is that where, think where the, um, the, I guess the buy next weekend may even be a positive? So I say that again, please? I guess then with that resetting, is the buy being next week rather than, you know, being ahead of the finals, is that maybe a positive for that? Because... Um, yeah, you've got some time to actually reset and, you know, make sure that, you know, this isn't, yeah, the peak. Yeah, well, I think it gives us three or four days just to, to take a breath, to understand where we sit and understand what the opportunity is in front of us and, and tune away from footy for three or four days. But um, there's no question come, you know, next Friday or Saturday, um, there'll be a, a good style match simulation that will take place that will get our players in a great frame of mind for the week ahead. So... Um, yeah, it, uh, it's nice to have a few days away, but there's still a big job to do. Simon, what would you say right now to the tens of thousands of Melbourne supporters who've waited so long for this club to be in this position, Most, almost all of whom in Melbourne particularly won't be able to get to the grand final in Perth? What would you say half of the football club to those people after what they've been through over the decades? It's a... It's a Really good question, Jake, and it's hard to put it into words about what this this means to our supporter group. Um, the amount of messages and support and emails and that's coming through is unbelievable. And we hear about what's taking place back in Melbourne and the support and how the supporters are embracing the situation that we're in. But ultimately, we'd love them to be here. We'd love them to be doing it in front of our home people, our home supporters. Um, but what I want to make sure they understand is that they should be really proud of their footy club, really proud of their team. And uh, we feel their support. We are doing this for them. We want to make them so proud of their footy club once and for all um, that they can sit there and enjoy, um, you know, drink together and understand that they've got a really strong footy club. And um, that's what we're trying to build. How do you keep, I guess, this slide being distracted? I'll keep, you know, the 57 years since the last premiership. How do you keep that to be at this minimal distraction over the next couple of weeks? Yeah, look, I spoke about pressure during the week, that every club faces a form of pressure in, in big games. Um, and our pressure comes from you know, not winning a premiership for 57 years, but it's, it's something we've spoken about, you know, how we deal with pressure and how we deal with expectation for the last two years. Um, and we've prepared our players to do that. Um, so nothing will change in that space. There is pressure on every team at this time of year. Um, so, yeah, it's been a long time since we've won. We've got ourselves an opportunity and we're looking forward to going after it. Simon, when you mentioned before the scoring power of the side, I mean, it wasn't long ago that there was a few people questioning just what way you'd go with this forward line. How, how sort of important has Ben Brown's continuity been? And he had a couple of really big moments early tonight. How, how important has that been to this side's run of form? Oh, he's been really important, Brownie. You know, we brought him to the club for a specific reason to, to do what he did tonight, um, to impact the scoreboard, to be a real focal point for us. And it wasn't just his marks early. I thought he, his ability to get the ball to ground for us throughout the whole night was really strong. And, um, you know, he's functioning really well alongside the other key forwards and um, giving us great aerial competition, but also great, great ground level support. So we're right with how the forwards are functioning. Simon, so, Gary Lyons spoke this week about his hope that uh, Ron Barassi and Neil Danaher can witness a Melbourne Premiership. I mean, how significant is that for the club and is that something that you can harness in the next couple of weeks? Yeah, look, we certainly have a huge amount of respect for our past and um, 
there are so many people that have put a lot of hard work into our footy club and you've mentioned a few there you know um, there's a lot of past players a lot of support staff a lot of people that have been involved over a long long pe uh, period of time um, that ultimately we want to make proud and um, the two you spoke of there are great examples of that so um, we certainly are very humbled by the opportunity and, and grateful that we get the chance to, to make everyone proud. How much freedom do you get this week, Simon? You said players will get some time off. What are they going to be able to do now that they're out of quarantine and able to experience life again? Yeah, I'm looking forward to having a, a coffee at a cafe if we can and uh, maybe a round of golf. I think the boys are looking forward to a quiet round of golf together. So, yeah, look, there's a few things. I think we can just get out and be normal normal citizens now and, and be a part of the public and, and do what we what we wish. And um, I think that's going to be good for us, you know, to get out of quarantine and to, to spend some time just living a normal life. And did you notice, uh, it was a Melbourne crowd tonight, the, the, the support was clearly behind you from the start. How evident was that to you while you're working? Yeah, look, it's been evident all week. You know, the Perth people have got right in behind the demons and, um, you know, we want that to continue. We've got three lads that are Perth lads that bring a lot of excitement to the group and um, the, the support tonight from the Perth people were amazing and um, you know, hopefully they can continue to get in behind the Ds in the next few weeks. Last Simon, couple of guys, if you don't mind. Simon, the grand final, the build-up to the grand final is normally um, very much about the crowd as much as it is and the supporters as much as it is the teams. Is We've already heard that the... Um, the parade's going to be something a little bit different. Is there going to be a chance, you know, we, are we going to get um, Melbourne training open to the crowd and we're going to get that opportunity for engagement with uh, with the spectators over the next couple of weeks? Yeah, look, I'm sure we'll, um, we'll talk through that as a footy club tomorrow. Our first challenge was to get through tonight. Um, we'll speak about that tomorrow and, and come up with a plan of attack, but I'm sure there'll be a level of engagement with our supporters that are in Perth. Um, no question about that. And we'll find the right times to build that up and, and make sure everyone gets access and the players feel that it's a, a pretty special occasion. Good. In a game like tonight, where, how can you tell early that you're on? What, what, what were you seeing early on that made you think it was going to be a good night for you guys? Uh, ability to win contests and ability to defend strongly. Um, you know, that's, that's how we build our footy team and um, that's, what, that's how we want to be seen. So when, when you see that, um, it's a good sign for Melbourne.